Power Limitation Concept in EEXI. In this presentation, we will cover three parts, an overall introduction of EPL, its methods of power limitation system, and the procedure for document approval and verification of EPL. Now let us shortly review about EPL. Most ships operate below 75% of their maximum continuous rating, including engine and sea margins. Additionally, due to earlier spike in bunker prices, many shipping companies are still operating their ships under low steaming. Because of slow steaming, even if the engine power is limited for EEXI, its impact on ship's logistics operation is expected to be minor. However, for some vessels, it is possible for engine power limiting point to be located within the ship's standard operating range. Therefore, vessel owners must be prepared for these kinds of cases. In this example, the vessel's attained EEXI is 84, but the EEXI target is 70. Since the attained EEXI exceeds the target by 20%, the engine power must be reduced by 24%. Of course, this 24% is just an example for your easy understanding, and specific relationships between EEXI and EPL will vary depending on the ship. However, and importantly, if the attained EEXI is higher than EEXI target, the simplest method is to limit the engine power. To satisfy the EEXI target, there may be concerns regarding implementing a minimum propulsion power may compromise the seaworthiness of the ship. According to the conclusions of MEPC 75-6-8, EPL is a solution for efficient vessel operation only and does not affect the minimum propulsion power. It should be understood that EPL setting can and should be able to return to the original engine power at any time so there is no need to concern about minimum propulsion power. Now let's take a look at the methods of power limitation systems available in the market. This is the power limitation method applied to mechanically controlled engines. Generally, this type of engine is commanded by bridge maneuvering system, which is called BMS. This BMS orders the mechanical governor to adjust power and RPM by changing the fuel index. This engine also has manual control lever on the local engine side to adjust power and RPM in case of an emergency situation. Therefore, for a mechanically controlled engine, first, change the BMS's governor parameters to meet the power limit target. Second, adjust the mechanical stopper setting on the local engine side to meet the power limit, then seal it by wire. Finally, at an alarm point when unlimiting action is applied in an emergency situation. This is the power limitation method applied to electronically controlled engines. This type of engine has a command route from the BMS to an electronic governor that passes through the engine control unit, which is called ECU, to adjust power and RPM by changing the fuel index. Unlike the mechanically controlled engine, the ECU has higher priority than the BMS, so the parameter is changed in the ECU instead of the BMS. Therefore, for an electronically controlled engine, change the parameters in the ECU first to meet the power limit target, then set a password. Second, add an alarm point when unlimiting action is applied in an emergency situation. This is the power limitation method that is applied to electric propulsion, steam turbine propulsion, and such alike, rather than conventional propulsion systems. These kinds of propulsion systems do not have a governor to regulate fuel, so power and RPM can be managed by the manufacturer's power control system. Thus, detailed limiting processes need to be discussed with each individual propulsion system manufacturer. Hence, for the non-conventional propulsion system, changes to the parameters are made in the specific power control system to meet the power limit target, then a password set. Also, there is a need to add an alarm point when unlimiting action is applied in an emergency situation. Let's move on to the last part, where we will explain the procedure for document approval and verification of EPL. This is a description of the document approval process. First, 
The shipping company should calculate the attained and target EEXI whether the power limiting is required or not. If the attained EEXI is higher than the target, you should find the appropriate power and RPM using the EEXI equation until attained EEXI falls below the EEXI target. Second, request an EPL report from the engine licensor or manufacturer based on power and RPM as determined by the EEXI calculation. Third, create an onboard management manual which is called OMM by referring to the EPL report received from the engine licensor or manufacturer. The contents of the OMM are detailed in the relevant MEPC document. Please refer to MEPC 76-7-4, Annex 3, Section 4. Then submit the OMM to RO for approval. This is the procedure after document approval. Once the EEXI technical file and OMM is approved, the shipping company should request for the EPL work to be carried out by the engine manufacturer. The service engineer from the engine manufacturer will carry out the power limitation work mentioned in the OMM and EPL reports. Then, the RO surveyor will check the result of the power limitation action. Finally, I will mention the temporary unlimit of power, also known as the use of reserved power. Only the master or the officer on duty can make the decision to temporarily release the power limit. Use of reserved power is usually only required for adverse weather, ice-infested weather, rescue operations, avoiding pirate attacks, engine maintenance, and such alike. When the power limit is released, the details must be recorded in the OMM record page and notified to the administration or RO. The list of required records is detailed in the MEPC document. Please refer to MEPC 76-7-4, Annex 3, Section 3. As soon as the cause of temporary release is resolved, the engine power should be lowered to below the power limit. Then, EPL should be reactivated to the nearest arrival port and checked by an RO surveyor. To summarize, EPL does not have to consider minimum propulsion power. EPL or shaft power limitation may be the first action to be considered to satisfy EEXI. The engine licensor or manufacturer could be asked to provide EPL reports. The EPL setup may vary depending on which control system has been configured, such as mechanical, electrical, or non-conventional. Only the master or the officer on duty can authorize the use of reserve power. Every power unlimiting should be recorded and notified to the administration or the RO. RO confirmation is required each time the power limit is reset. Finally, it is expected that many vessels will not achieve their EEXI targets without the use of EPL. EPL or shaft power limitation is thought to be the least expensive and least cumbersome way to comply with regulations. Thank you for watching our video and our experts would be very happy to further answer any questions when you contact us via email or through our Korean website.